السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ما شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد سبحانك لا إلما لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت لليم الحكيم رب شهلي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لسان يفكه قولي قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن Respected brothers and elders, mothers and sisters in Islam, we are grateful, we are thankful for the bounties and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in the company of the righteous in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us amongst the righteous on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our lives with mercy and rahmah as all of us are in the need of the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, tonight is a very Mubarak night. As according to many of the uh, Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajba'een, the 27th night itself was considered to be the night of Qadr. May Allah allow us to benefit from these nights and moments. But this is the time is truly passing quickly. We just want to share a small short reflection so that really we can engage in our individual ibadat, in our actions. But a reminder for all of us about the importance of this very particular night. You know, subhanAllah, this has been a tradition. I think many years we have been gathering on the 27th night as a reminder for myself and all of us. I want to share with you something very small, very quick from the 26th, 27th Sipara. Tonight is our 27th night. So from the 27th Juz of the Quran, the 27th Sipara, I want to share with you one small portion that we can all take back, inshallah. So this is the 55th Surah in the order of recitation. This is known as Surah Ar-Rahman. Many of us know the Surah. And this is the first ayat of the Surah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ar-Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions His name, the Most Merciful. So with this name, I want to share something for all of us, inshallah, to take back home tonight. So brothers and sisters, when we talk about the word Ar-Rahman, it's very similar to the word Ar-Rahim as well, right? That's how the Quran begins. When we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Usually, when we look at the translation of Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim, we usually use the word the most beneficent, the most merciful, right? That's usually the translation. If you look at different English translations, this is what you're going to find. But in your practical lives, you never use the word beneficent, right? For people, right? Rarely ever use it. So Quran has to be something very practical that we can utilize on a very daily basis for ourselves as well. So the word Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are very similar and also very different as well. And that's the beauty of Quran. That's the beauty of Quran itself. That they are very similar as well, but they're also very different as well. What do I mean by that? So the word Ar-Rahman, which is the lesson that I want myself and all of us to take back, and Ar-Rahim itself, all come from that same word known as Raham. Right? The word Raham. You must have heard the word Raham before in your life. The Rahmat of Allah, the Raham. And usually when we talk, and, and the word Raham, is that same word that from which Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim both comes from, the word Raham itself. Now, what is the translation of the word Raham? In English, usually what do people use and usually translate this word as? People translate the word Raham as mercy, right? Most of us. But if you look at the deeper, and this is something a little, little difficult, but I hope you can understand. I know it's 1.45 in the morning, but it's important because it's so important for us to understand this word, the meaning of it, the beauty of the Quran behind it. So the word Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim comes from the Arabic root known as Raham. The word Raham in English is usually translated as Mercy, right? Mercy. But if you look at the word mercy, 
it really does not justify the true meaning of the word raham. Why do I say this? Usually mercy is when you give someone a favor, right? Mercy hospital. Why is it made? Because it's mercy for someone that you take care of someone, right? If someone has done something wrong or someone that has not been appropriate in their action, so they say, please show some mercy. Please show some raham in that sense. Please show some generosity. Please show some courtesy. Please show some benevolence. Please show some care for someone in exchange that you forgive them, right? That's usually what mercy is used for. But that's not the true trans translation of the word raham. When you look at the word raham, that is the root of ar-Rahman, it is actually from the root of the word raham, which means the womb of the mother. The womb of the mother where the child lives for nine months is known as a raham. Ma ka raham, as they say in Urdu. Raham. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith al-Qudsi itself speaks directly to the womb of the mother. And Allah says to the womb of the mother that I have given you your name from my own personal attributes and names. So Raham, the womb of the mother, has been given directly its name from the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman. And now what are the qualities of a Raham, a womb? A womb is some place where a child stays, and in, in, in reality, mercy is, where people show conditional love. This world is all based upon conditional love. There are very few rishta or relationship where love is unconditional. Otherwise, this dunya is all based upon needs and reasons. That's the reality of life. That's why Rasulullah said, people will be brothers in gatherings and enemies when they depart. Because the only reason that they show love is because they need something from one another. Otherwise, they would suck the blood of their brothers and sisters just so that they can benefit from them. Right? So very few people in this world or relationships are based upon unconditional love. Otherwise, everything in this world is ghard, is need, it's want and desire from someone else. And amongst one of those things that are very unconditional is the raham itself, the mother. Because in this world, when you say, you know what, I love you unconditionally, and the next day this person starts bashing you on social media, and you say, you know what, I hate this person the most. Didn't you say you love me unconditionally, I can do anything? That unconditional doesn't mean that I can do everything. These are just words of unconditional things. But truly unconditional love is only one place where a mother is eating and this child is taking the food away from the mother in the womb. This mother is staying awake the whole night and the child is sleeping and, and, and being comfortable. While this child is making this mom vomit 17 times a day and she still cares and love for that child. And the mother almost gives her life bringing that child to, li to life. And still at this time when this child is born, not only that this mother throws that child away, she picks that child up and starts feeding the child right away, which causes her even more pain. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word ar-Rahman from his qualities from the root of the word raham, the womb of the mother. A lot of time we mistranslate the word raham Raham is not just mercy, because mercy is where you're showing mercy to people because you just want to be nice to them or you can forgive them or not. The word Raham in Arabic, that is the root of the word Ar-Rahman, comes from the root of the womb of the mother, that is unconditional love for the children, and that is the unconditional love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of us. Brothers and sisters, find me someone who loves you and cares for you more than your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no one in this world who loves you and cares for you more than the one who created you. 
the ones who provide for you, the one who sustains you, the one who nourishes you, the one who gives you the ability to see from the eyes which sin commit, commit day and night, the disobedience of Allah, the one that allows you to listen from the years that Allah has given you, even though we commit to transgression day in and day out. And the one who gives us the ability to speak from our tongues that we use against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he allows us to speak every single day. And that heart that pumps every single second so many times, even though we never remember Allah, even our sajdas are empty from the remembrance of Allah. And that mind that always thinks of other than Allah, but Allah gives us that intellect, find me someone who is more merciful than Allah. So he uses the sifa and the quality Ar-Rahman. He begins with the quality of Ar-Rahman. That find me someone who loves you unconditionally. That whatever you do in your life, whatever happens in your life, Allah is there for us. The word Ar-Rahman has three qualities. This is not an Arabic lesson, but I want you to love the Quran. I want you this Ramadan to be able to connect yourself to the Quran. And specifically this night, the 27th night, the Surah Ar-Rahman itself. The word Ar-Rahman has three qualities that I want you to take back and then we'll conclude inshallah. The word Ar-Rahman, this word an at the end, you can, even if you don't know Arabic, but the, the verbal understanding of the words, linguistics of it is Ar-Rahman. This an at the end of the word is known as Ismul Mubalagha which means something that is emphasized. The one that is not just merciful, beneficent, giving, but the one who is extremely giving and merciful. The one who gives unconditionally. The one who provides without even looking at the other side. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, if we were given according to what we earned, I promise we won't have much in our lives. If the condition of this ummah was like the previous ummah, where our sins were noticed by people when we committed, then I don't even think our own mothers and fathers would sit next to us because of our sins. If our sins were visible to our friends, even those who are the closest to us would not even want to see our faces. If our sins were visible to people, the sun would become dark because of its darkness. If our sins were visible to people, the oceans will become filthy because of the wrongs that we have committed. But it's the Raham of Allah, Ar-Rahman, the mercy of Allah. And with all of that mercy, our Allah is asking, is there anyone more beloved to you than me? Is there anyone who cares for you more than me? Is there anyone that you need to give more attention to me than me? Is there anyone that you need to be more connected to, do, to me than me? So the word Ar-Rahman has three qualities inside of it. The word Ar-Rahman, An, the word An in Arabic usually refers to in Arabic as Mubalagha, something that is emphasized, something that is recurring and something that is an extreme amount. So first thing is that the Rahmah of Allah is extensive. It's not limited. It's not something that is for only exclusive people, exclusive times. That's why the Sahaba used to say that the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim is that the Rahman is for everyone. The one who curses Allah, the Rahman still provides for them. The one who associates partner onto Allah, Rahman still provides for them. The one who transgresses the limits of Allah, the Rahman still feeds them. The one who says wrong towards Allah and accuses him for the wrong, Rahman still provides for them. So Rahman fi dunya, Rahim fil akhirah. Rahman in this world and Rahim on the day of Qiyamah. Both are the sifat and the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rahman means the most merciful, the one there is no mercy more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, not only mercy, brothers and sisters, the, the mercy that comes from the womb of the mother that is unconditional, that when you take everything away, they are still giving you more, right? That's what mothers are. You take everything away, she will still offer you more as long as you are happy. That's what Raham is. That's what the womb is, right? And subhanAllah, may Allah protect for those whose mothers are alive 
as a, as a, as a shadow of rahmah and mercy upon them. And for those whose mothers are not, may Allah grant them the highest of the place in Al-Fardaus Al-Ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the place amongst the wives and sahabiyat, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because brothers and sisters, mothers are such, so valuable that once gone, nothing in this world can fill that gap. Nothing in this world can fill the gap of a mother. Wallahi, I'm telling you this. I have a very close friend of mine. I always tell his story. He says, ever since my mother was alive, I never made dua for myself. Never made dua for myself until my mother was alive. Because I knew I used to get wholesale. My mom used to make every day for me. I never used to ask anything. And once that door closed, I actually started asking Allah because I knew that door was closed for me. But there is no one more merciful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one who is more worthy of giving our heart than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one in this world who is more worthy of loving than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one more worthy of giving our life towards goodness than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ar-Rahman means mubalagha, the emphasis of mercy, number one. Number two, the word an, any Arabic word that ends with the word an, ar-Rahman, the word an in, in Arabic, second word is, the second quality in Arabic word is that it's present at this moment, meaning something that exists now, not that something was. That person is very patient, was pa very patient, or that person is really nice, but are they even nice now or not? So the word an, which ends in Arabic words, refers to the mercy that exists at this moment. Mercy that is attached now, not that it was or will be, but it means that the quality exists in that individual or that deity at this moment, which means that the mercy of Allah exists at all times, at every moment, wherever you turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why brothers and sisters, in any ibadah, in any sort of, uh, you know, subhanAllah, ayats of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions even the most sinful individuals, Allah says, Ibadi, mere bandi, my people, my servants. Allah never says, you're not mine. Jao duro, like, why are you doing this wrong? Even the dunya wale, the people of this world, if they know your sins, they don't want to look at your face. But the one who provides us with everything, he always says, Ibadi, mera banda, you're my servant. You're my servant. Who cares if the world abandons you Allah says, I will never abandon you. I will never leave you. If the whole world leaves you, Allah says, I will welcome you. My doors will always be open for you. He begins the Quran by saying he is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. If the whole world says, there, we have nothing to do with you, but Allah says, you are welcome with me. Right? The doors of Allah are always open. So the word An in the word Ar-Rahman, the second quality is, that the rahmah of Allah exists now. It's not that it did or it will. It means it's existence now. So number one quality of Rahman was mubalagha, emphasis. That there is no one who is more merciful than Allah. Number two, the mercy of Allah exists now. It's not that it will or it was, but it exists now. The third quality is the most scariest. And that scares me the most. And this third quality of the word an in ar-Rahman is that it, the quality may not last with you forever as few actions may deprive you of that action. Because certain action can close the doors of that action towards you. The mercy and the rahmah of Allah that exist may be stopped because of our actions and our deeds. And that's the most scariest part. That sometimes we ourselves through our actions deprive ourselves of the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mercy of Allah is endless. But it is us who close the doors for the rahmah of Allah to reach us. And that's the third characteristics of the word in Arabic that ends with the word an. Ar-Rahman. Mubalagha, number one, emphasis. 
Number two, it exists at this moment now. And number three, it's conditional that sometimes because of actions and deeds of individuals, they may be deprived of the blessings of that action because they put doors inside of this. Which means, brothers and sisters, the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is open for all of us. As the raham of the mother, the womb of the mother, welcomes every single child to an extent that it's willing to give its own portion to provide and sustain. For brothers and sisters, let not the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be stopped in our lives because of our actions and our wrongs. These nights in the month of Ramadan are the most important nights for all of us to remember these points, brothers and sisters. What are some of the things that we can do? And I conclude with this. Now this night is in front of us. Not much of this night is left, brothers and sisters. How can we spend this night in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in, four a'mal from their life. Number one, you can make long rakats of tahajjud in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is nothing where a servant is more closer to Allah than your sajdas, brothers and sisters. Find the closeness of Allah in your sajda. If you cannot get what you need in Ramadan, in the last ashra, on an odd night, on the 27th night, in the last third of the night, in the masjid, in your sajda, then when will we will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then when will we get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters? So tonight is that moment where you get everything you need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing that is impossible in the khazain of Allah. Brothers and sisters, our dua, our thoughts could be limited, but the khazain of Allah are endless and they can never be finished. Inna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum, the first of you, the last of you, the humans of you and the jinn of you. If we're all to gather together and ask Allah for your needs, Nothing will empty from the treasures of Allah, not even a dropping of a pin that is placed inside an ocean, not even this much will empty. So number one is long rakats of the hajjah tonight, if you can. Even two rakats in front of Allah, number one. Number two, if you get some chance tonight, open the Quran and read the book of Allah. Even if it's a small page, the Quran began on the night of power. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr relationship with the Quran. If you don't know how to read the Quran, like the Sahaba said, we would hold the Quran and we would open the book of Allah and the scriptures which were present at that time was very different from ours. But when they would look at the kalam, they would say, Hada kalamu Rabbi. Hada kalamu Rabbi. These are the words of my Allah. These are the words of my Allah. Their hearts would tremble that this is the word of my Mahboob. This is the words of my beloved. If you can read the Quran, just hold the Quran and say, this is the kalam of my Allah. This is the kalam of my Allah. Spend a few moments with the Quran. Number three, spend some moments, some moments of your time tonight in your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, we live in a time that we are multitasking. So many of us, forgive me, who are sitting here already planning our suhoor post fajr plannings, what we need to do tomorrow. We're all multitasking. Our hearts are so occupied that they're all over the place. Our hearts need some rest, brothers and sisters. We give ourselves all comforts of this world, but why is there no sakoon and comfort in our lives? Why is there no sakoon in our lives when we have everything that we can imagine? Because brothers and sisters, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts. Spend some time in the remembrance of Allah. Salawat and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and sincere toba and istighfar in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last but not least, the fourth thing before I conclude, brothers and sisters, spend a moment tonight in asking Allah for all of your needs. I say this statement a lot. Our teachers, may Allah reward them and bless them in the greatest of the reward used to say, I'll say in Urdu, I'll translate that in English. They used to always say, The closed doors do not open without crying in front of Allah. The doors that we have shut closed because of our sins cannot open without shedding tears in front of Allah, brothers and sisters. Tonight is that night where you shed those tears 
and get those doors open, brothers and sisters. The impossibles of your life that you thought was never possible is something that Allah will make it happen for you, brothers and sisters. Allah is kareem, Allah is merciful. Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an an yaqula lahu kun fayakun. He says, be, it comes into existence. There is nothing mightier than the qadr of Allah, the power of Allah, the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tonight in your dua, you ask Allah for changing your lives, brothers and sisters. And please, my final request, don't be scared to connect your hearts with Allah. I know many of us are scared. Bro, what if I make tawbah and Allah changes my life? What will happen to me? What will happen to my life? What will happen to my friends? What will happen to all the things that I'm doing? I take the qasam of Allah in this night on the last ashra of the month of Ramadan in the house of Allah. Find me one person who said, I found Allah and I'm not happy. I promise you, I will find you hundreds, if not thousands and millions who will say that I have everything in this world, but I don't have sakoon in my life. Find me one person who said, I found Allah and I'm not happy. You found Allah, you found everything in this world. You fill your life with Allah, you found everything, brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid in making toba. Don't be afraid in making your dua sincere in front of Allah. Don't be scared in changing your life towards goodness. Because if Allah allows you to turn back towards Him, then Allah will take care of you. For those who said that the animals of Makkah will accept Islam, but Umar will not change. But when Allah changed his heart, the Prophet said, if there was a prophet after me, it would have been you, O Umar bin Khattab. For the doors that you walk upon and the path that you walk upon, shaitan is scared of the shadow of Umar bin Khattab. For, O oh, Umar, when you are placed inside the Qabr, rather than you being questioned, you will answer the angels of the crave, their questions itself. And O oh, Umar, for indeed I saw a palace in Jannah so beautiful that I was so surprised that I wanted to enter myself, but I was told it was the palace of Umar bin Khattab. There's no limit to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tonight, don't hold back in seeking the forgiveness of Allah. And make firm irada, firm intention that O oh, Allah, bas, O oh, Allah, enough of my life in your disobedience. Oh Allah, as I tasted this life, the ladhat of it in this obedience, oh Allah, give me the ladhat and the taste of your obedience now. Ask Allah that, oh Allah, I have tasted the pleasure of sins in my life. Oh Allah, gunah ki lazzat puri zindagi chakha. Oh Allah, allow me to taste the pleasure of your obedience from now. Feel the pleasure of the obedience of Allah, brothers and sisters. And for those who will feel this, there is no high of this world that can ever replace the obedience of Allah. Ahlul layli fil layli, aladdu min ahlul la'abi fil la'ab. For those who spend their nights in front of Allah in the obedience of Allah, who can ever and how can those who enjoy their nights in lustfulness can ever know what they are enjoying in the obedience of Allah? How can those who sacrifice their eyes from haram be ever equal to those who enjoy their eyes in looking at haram? How can those young individuals who fulfill their lusts and desires and those who suppress their desires for the pleasure of Allah ever be equal in the eyes of Allah? How can those eyes who look at haram and those eyes who shed tears for the fear of Allah ever be equal in the eyes of Allah? How can those ears who listen to haram with lustfulness and those which listen to the Quran be ever equal in the eyes of Allah? How can those minds and hearts that pump for the lust and desires of dunya be ever equal to those hearts and minds which pump only the desire of the love of Allah, brothers and sisters. Make that change. Allah's qasam, you will never regret it. This is the time. If we don't change now, I don't think there is any more opportunities for us more because Allah gives us these tests. I don't stop the rahmah of Allah. I'm no one. Allah can always change our lives. May Allah always keep the doors of Rahmah open for us. But this is an opportunity for all of us. So my humble request, brothers and sisters, for all of our lives of disobedience, knowingly, unknowingly, intentionally, unintentionally, in the middle of the day, in the dead of the night, whatever wrong that we have done, tonight is the time that we seek Allah's forgiveness. 
and we ask Allah, Ay Allah, bas, main thak gaya. Allah, I'm tired of sinning now. Oh Allah, I want to enjoy my life in your obedience, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, I want to spend the rest of my life, Oh Allah, only pleasing you, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, I want to live my life as you could be happy with me. Allah's qasam, that flip of your life will change your entire life. Allah will make you a source of hidayat for the humanity. You're walking, you're talking, your movement, and the air that touches your body and touches the people will become a source of hidayat when you make this intention to change your lives. So brothers and sisters, tonight, seek Allah's forgiveness. Previous sins, ask Allah for forgiveness. Future life, make firm intentions. Pakka wada. Allah se dhoka nahi karna. Aaj Allah se pakka wada karna. Allah, I make firm promise. That, oh Allah, I'm not going back. I'm not going back from this place tonight without changing my life, Allah. You, Allah, oh Allah, you give me that strength. You give me the ability to change my life. Long rakat of tahajjit, read Quran to Allah, little bit of zikr and dua to Allah, and crying in front of Allah and fulfilling all our needs. May Allah give us tawfiq and ability to live our life in the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad May Allah give us the blessings of this beautiful night. May Allah allow us to live according to the Quran and the beautiful sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, Qiyam will be at 2.15, inshallah. So we have about two minutes left, inshallah. May Allah accept from all of us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.